Welcome back. This is TPC STAR Algebra 1 end of course training for the Desmos graphing calculator. If you will go to your show notes, the link to the page you see is in the show notes. Click the link and when you come back, click this green button that says sign in. Next, choose your grade and you will choose EOC. Uh, click on STAR practice sets. Scroll down to Mathematics and choose the star redesign. Scroll down, choose Select, and the Begin Test Now. The last time we were here, we have done two practice videos so far. So we are going to skip all the way to item 32 and that's going to take a while so i'm going to get you started and then uh, you'll need to pause the video and click on through and i'll show you how now we've talked about this before but if you try to go to the next question in this test you will get a warning each time and it, you will need to say yes to skip the question or you can just choose an answer if you prefer but we are going to continue doing this over and over again until we get to item 32 because this is an adaptive test, they do not want you skipping questions, so that's why they make it challenging to do that. Um, since this is a practice test, this is not really an adaptive test. Uh, it's going to give you the same practice items every time you come in here. But the actual test gives you different items depending on how you're doing. So instead of you watching me click this over and over, next and yes, next and yes, go ahead and pause the video click through and stop when you get to item 32. Okay, so hopefully you have found question number 32. And to do this item, um, we are gonna use the calculator. To use the calculator, you click the button and choose Desmos Graphing Calculator. And then we're gonna move this over. I'm gonna try resizing this. Let's see, let's do that for now, that'll work. All right, dance lessons are offered at two studios, and the first studio is Q. It charges $30 plus $80 per month. That per month is kind of important because that's telling you what the slope is going to be. So let's see if we can write an equation for this one. I'm going to type a capital Q for Studio Q, and then I'm going to do an X for my months. You could use an M or N for number of months but I'll use X and then I'm going to say that's equal to and we're starting with $30 and we're going to add because it says plus $80 per month so we'll put an X for months. All right let's do another one for Studio R. This one charges $105 so we'll put a capital R and then we'll put R of X equals 105 registration fee so we're going to pay 105 plus $65 per month. So 65 and our variable is X. So we should be able to see two lines in the graph. And um, to be honest, we can hardly see where they cross. So I'm going to give you a little strategy here that I think will help. And that is a table. So go to your add item and choose table. And then let's type in uh, our X's. Now it says how many months? Well, you'll notice in your months we have four possibilities. We have five, we have 280, we have nine, and we have 430. So I'm going to put those many months, that's my X's, in my table. And of course the order doesn't matter. So for Y1, I'm going to take this out. Let me move this over so we can see better. I'm going to take out this Y1 and replace that with capital Q open parentheses x1 and what it did is it took those values in x1 and put all of those numbers one at a time into q of x and these are the numbers that it output now go to the right of that and it will create another column in your table we're going to do the same thing for the function r so i put a capital r open parentheses x1 you have to type a one it will subscript it for you you don't have to do that part, you just type a one and it will use the numbers in the X1 column to fill this out. So the question is, after how many months would the total cost be the same? And if you will notice, the only 
two that are the same is for five. When x1 was five, both outputs were 430. So the correct answer in this case is five. The next item we're looking at is item number 33. And this says which statement is best supported by the graph of the function. So what I'm gonna do is try to graph this function. Let me show you how. So go ahead and click on calculator. And I'm actually gonna use a table. I know that's kind of weird, but if you need an equation or you need a graph to be recreated, that's one way to do it. So let's go ahead and create a table. Okay, so in this graph, which I can hardly see what I'm doing, but let's see if I can move this over. I notice this graph crosses at zero three. So what I wanna do is put that point zero three in here. Now, if you're a student who struggles with graphing zero three, you, maybe you get three zero and zero three mixed up. And some people do that. I think I was a student that used to do that. Uh, when you graph it, you'll see that it's either it is or isn't in the right spot because you can click on it and see it in the graph. And this is on the Y axis zero three. So it's in the right spot. You may also notice another point on here is on the X axis at six zero. So let's move this over can't resize it like I want. Let's see. Let's try this way. So I'm going to add six zero to this graph. And I'm going to have to zoom out just a bit so I can see it. And here it is. Six zero zero three. All right. Now, if you want to graph a line to connect those, you click on this little button here that's in the table. Mine's green but they can be any color. And then down here where it says lines, you slide this to the right and it'll create a line for you. And so it's not the whole line. It doesn't continue on forever. It does stop at these points, but at least you've got something there to look at that's similar to the one that's on the test itself. So let's see if which of these answers makes the most sense of the choices that we have. It says the slope of the graph is one half. Well, if you know how to do slope, uh, you should know the change in Y over the change in X is slope. And this is going down 3 and up 6. So it's actually a negative slope. The graph's decreasing. So that one does not make sense. It says the X-intercept is 6. And that is true. It is crossing the X-axis at 6. A 0 is 1 half. No, a 0 is actually 6. It's where the Y value is 0. And the last one said the Y-intercept was 6. But the Y-intercept was actually 3. So the correct answer, and the only one that made sense, was answer choice B. So let's go to the next item. We are going to go ahead and do item 34. This expression, which expression is a factor of 6m squared minus 81? Now, we've discussed this before. Whenever you have variables that are not x in your expression and you would like to use a graph to determine what you're doing, you do need to write as a function. So we'll do that. Click on the fact, uh, calculator and let's type in a function of m. I'm going to use an f for the name of my function. m is my variable. And then I'm going to say it's equal to this expression. So 16m squared minus 81. Now that's way, way down there. You can zoom out. I don't really like that, though. Let's see if we can make our x's go from like negative 10 to 10. So click on your wrench and you can do that. And then your step, you could count by ones. Now, these y's are way bigger. So let's do from negative 100 to positive 100 and we can count by tens. I'm going to add label x and add label y. And if you would like, you can turn off your minor grid lines uh, or not. This should work, though. That looks good. All right, I'm going to zoom in some more. This is better. All right, I can see that pretty good. Now, I've got a nice looking parabola here. So my goal is to find factors for the parabola. Well, factors will always intercept the x intercepts of this parabola. So my two factors should go through one of these two points. 
So let's see what the answers are, and we'll try these one at a time. The first one was 2m minus 9. Well, you can't type an m without typing a function first. So I'm going to call this g of m, and then I'm going to say it's equal to 2m minus 9, and it'll graph a line. Well, this line does not intersect either one of these x-intercepts, and it has to go through a 0 to be a factor. So this one won't work. So let's go to the next answer choice. I'll take out this 2 and replace that with a 16. So that's 16 minus 9. I need a 16 plus 9. And once again, it does not intercept these x-intercepts. So it's not the right answer. So let's go to answer choice C. This is 8m minus 9. Still not working. We got one left. Hopefully this one works. We got 4m plus 9. And look at that. It does go through one of the x-intercepts. So the correct answer in this problem was answer choice D. The next item we're looking at is item number 35. Here's an equation, K of line k, it's y equals negative x plus 17. A line parallel to k passes through this point. Determine an equation that represents the relationship between x and y for line n. So I'm going to create, first of all, a graph for the line y is equal to negative x plus 17. So let's just do that, y equals negative x plus 17. And then I need it to go through the point negative 5, 7. So I'm going to do negative 5, 7 in parentheses. And then where it says label, you're going to check that box. And so now my goal is to write an equation for a line that will intersect negative 5, 7, but be parallel to this line. So you can do y equals, if you want to do function notation, you can do n of x equals, but I'm just going to do y equals, and if you start with negative x plus 17, it's going to graph it right on top of the red line. But we need to move it down. So hopefully you know moving it down means the 17 needs to be changed. So I'm going to start with a 10. Uh, and that moved it down. It's further, it's closer to the blue point, but not close enough. So let's make it even smaller. We'll make it a five. Not quite yet. Let's make it a one. Whoop, that was too much. Let's try two. And that hits it right on. So just by guessing and checking my y-intercept, I was able to come up with a line that would intercept the point, negative five, seven, but remain parallel to the original line. So the equation is y equals negative x plus 2. So in this box, you're going to put y and then equals and then negative x plus 2. I don't think you have to use their keyboard at all for this problem. You can just use your regular keyboard on your Chromebook or your desktop or laptop or whatever you're using to take the test. And so that's all we're going to do with 35. So the next item and the last one we're doing today is 38. So go ahead and go to 36, then go to 37. You're going to have to say yes on this one. And then go ahead and go to 38, and you'll have to say yes to the warning. Okay, what are solutions to this equation? This one's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the calculator the original uh, equation. And like I've said before, some of these items, you may not need these strategies. You already know a better strategy or you already know the answer just by looking at the problem. And you should do those things. But even if you do know, it's not going to hurt you to check your answer. Because sometimes you think you know and then you realize later, oh, I can't do that. All right, first of all, when I typed this in the calculator, you'll get this, tr this triangle that says plotting equations, implicit equations is not allowed. It's disabled. So anytime you have an expression with x's in it and you put it equal to something, anything, it's going to disable it. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the equals zero and just leave it off. And we're going to call this, um, let's just do f of x equals 
or you could just leave it as an expression. I don't have to have that. So now I want to know which of these solutions will give me a zero out. Well, since I did do the function notation, I'm going to take advantage of that. Let's move out and see if we can see our whole parabola. Here it is. We have an x-intercept at 6, and we have an x-intercept at negative 13. There's your solutions. But I'm going to show you that if you type x equals 6, it will intercept the x-axis at that x-intercept. If you type x equals 13, it does not. But when you typed x equals negative 13, it does. So that's one way to get the correct answer. The answer is B. The other way is if you've used your function notation, like I just mentioned, you can type F of your whatever your answer is, whatever your solution is. So let's say F of negative 13, and notice the output was 0. If you do F of 6, the output is 0. So negative 13 and 6 will give you zeros for an output, so they are the solutions. So that concludes the practice items that we're doing today. This is the fourth video in a series of five videos for the STAR Algebra 1 test. So if you need additional training or have not seen those previous videos, go back and check videos 1 through 3. And there's one more coming. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow I'm going to try to get a fifth one posted. So check that out. And if you need anything else or if you need some more Dresmos calculator training, I do have some posted on my website, technomath.com. Y'all have a great day.